estranged wife. You know, to do something like that, you got to be a little uh, off the wall, to say the least. So a guy like that concerned me, you know, who knows? There's no cause or nothing here. Yeah, you know, no, it doesn't look like it. But let's see. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't look, Reggie, like anybody's even been here. Hello? Anybody? Well, one thing that's good is everything panned out. Yeah, the dress. But it looks like they were there recently because right. they pruned the... Uh, yeah, all the rose bushes. Rose is, yeah, I think somebody's around. Yeah, we'll come up with them. Just a matter of time, man. Just a matter of time. Reggie and I were still on a fence about Teresa, and finding James Glover was more important than ever. Our investigation led us to an attorney who negotiated a plea bargain for Glover, back when he was prosecuted for faking his own shooting. That attorney was Lynn Finney, and a few months later, Glover went to see Finney again. This time he heard that he was being looked at in the death of Taylor Fargacy. Well, I guess because I had represented him before, he thought to come back to me, and he and his mother came to my office and we had an interview. What happened? Why he was there? I'm trying to be real careful about how I say it. Some information was just thrown out um, as a result of the dialogue between mother and son, mm -hmm. at which point I said, stop right there, don't say anything else. But do you hear things that can affect the outcome of a trial? I would think so, yes. But um, really didn't know what I could or should do with the information. And so the trial commenced sometime later, and it looked like the trial was going really badly for Ms. Ferguson. And it was that point that went over to the attorney's office and told them everything I've told you. So the next morning, before the trial resumed, um, Judge Culpepper had an in-chambers um, hearing, and this was the issue, whether the information that I had was admissible or not. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the judge um, ruled rather quickly that the attorney-client privilege would stand, and therefore I would not um, be able to testify as to what took place in my office. But this is like a catch-22. You're damned if you do and damned if you don't. You have information. Well, again, you know, I can't go into that. I understand that, and that's got to be a lot of anguish on you because it puts you in a position where it's a real tough issue to live with. The information would have definitely been exculpatory okay. as to Ms. Ferguson. Okay. That doesn't mean I, I'm not presuming to say, oh, I know who really killed her. Um, I'm not going to go that far. Um, What'd you say? It's just not black and white. But it would have changed. Not, it would have changed the outlook. It, what information you would have gave on the stand would definitely have changed. What do you think would have happened to that case if you were allowed to testify and say what you know? Well, I think the the reasonable doubt would be obvious. It would be very obvious. Yeah, she probably never would have been convicted. Were you approached by James Glover again after that? After that, yeah, after the trial was over. Um, I was in um, the Kroger, of all places. At the time, my 13-year-old daughter was just a toddler. I had her in the little place where the children sit in the shopping cart, and I was doing my grocery shopping, and came around a corner, and there he was. And the stops me, you know, standing in front of me, and he said, oh, I didn't know you had such a pretty little daughter. And then he said, I bet you have to be really careful that nothing happens to her. So you took, obviously took that as a threat. I took my child out of the basket and left my groceries there and went and got in the car and left. You believe that? She could have, she could have blown the top off of that I know. I know. I think we had it. We were just close. Yeah. And she was a reasonable, intelligent, fair-minded person. To talk. I didn't even I found expect her to be that, that level-headed. I found her very credible. I liked her. And she was as candid as she could be, and I understand the situation she's in. I mean, as bad as I wanted to know, and I think someday it'll come out, but this is, she's being muffled by the courts, and that's the system. We have to find James Glover. Yeah. We have to find him. Glover was proving hard to find. 
We went to his house again, but like the first time, he wasn't there. So I decided to call around to some of the places where he might work. This is Quarry Center Company. You have James Glover working there? No, we sure don't. You don't? Okay, what's the other quarry in the area? Maybe I got the wrong one. You got the number for the other one? Good morning. Uh, James Glover, please. Who? James Glover. I don't know who you're talking about. Good morning. Good morning. James Glover, please. You look for stick. Who's this? This is Tom. Oh, hey. Hey, how are you? Fine, how are you? Where have you been hiding at? Ah, I don't know. I've been all over the place. But where's James? Is he going to be in today? Not sure what I said. But whatever it was, it turned out to be enough. It should be right up here. Yeah, there it is. This is where it works. Hey! We're looking for uh, James Glover. Stickman. Yeah, Stickman. This is the girl I was talking to earlier. How you doing? James. James. James Glover. James Glover. Yeah. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, how you here? Jerry Palace. Hi, I'm Reggie, Reggie Britt. How you Reggie feel? Britt. Did you know Teresa at all? Did you ever know Teresa? Did you ever meet Teresa before or after the murder? No. Did you, 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 but you met you met Taylor that day, mm -hmm. and you gave her. Yeah, all that bed. came out. That's all true. What do you think about uh, Lynn Finney? Who? The lawyer Finney. you went to when you had. If you don't want to talk about that, what what about the? Uh, yeah, she's. She's what? I don't. She had information about you that would have set Teresa Ferguson out, sent her out of jail. I don't know jail. what kind of information she had. I don't know what she could have known about anything. You mean, so there's no information that she had? I don't know of. I mean, that, what? That she I mean, you know, she went to the judge, she went to the district attorney, the judge, and all that. I understand mm -hmm. all that, and what she could have told that would have so-called blow this thing wide open, I have no idea what, she, what kind of information she would have had. And, and you're somebody innocent. Somebody was charged And you're innocent. You did nothing. Give me a break. You asking me if I'm innocent? I mean, yes. you're telling everybody. You, listen, we're okay, not. Gonna, how many we times probably, did I stand we, and tell well, you? Yes. Okay. I had nothing right. to do with anything with that case whatsoever. All right. But anyway, listen. I got to go to work. We wish we had more time to ask Glover a few more questions. What about running Teresa's license plate? Why did he bring a deli tray to her house after Taylor's funeral? What did he tell Lynn Finney? But what would his motive be? The little time we had with him wasn't enough, and we couldn't. He wasn't going to answer any of our questions. He was dancing. Yeah, doing a real tap dance. A real good tap dance. A few days later, we contacted Glover again by telephone, but he refused to elaborate any further. We had no way to know if Glover was involved in the crime. But the more we searched, more we seemed to uncover doubts about Teresa's guilt. But there was something Teresa was hiding from us. We both felt it during our interview. And her demeanor, you're telling me her demeanor was very calm? There was no tears even after the body was found. So the following week, we decided to head back to the prison and clear some things up. But... Reggie and I had learned a lot about Teresa Ferguson and the murder of her daughter, Taylor. We both felt that our two-year investigation would come down to what Teresa would say in the second meeting. We want to give her as many questions as we can, hardball questions. We got to get her a little unsettling and hit her hard and see can we get her away from that first interview. Something about that first interview that to me that she wasn't being truthful. Yeah. You know, I could even understand if something happened that evening and you were frustrated. And I can understand that. If, if you, emotionally, you were just drained and something happened and you did something to Taylor and you put your hand over her mouth. No. I mean, nothing like that? No. And I made a lot of mistakes in my life. I made a lot of mistakes as a mother. Murdering my daughter wasn't one of them. That's not what happened. No. I can't go back and change that night. I can't go back and pay more attention. I can't go back and hold her hand. I can't go back and change any of that. But that doesn't make me a murderer. That doesn't make me a mom that goes over the edge. Well, who else had the opportunity? I didn't, I didn't know James Lover even knew who I was. I didn't know who he was. I still don't know who he is. 
I wish Lynn Finney could tell us something. I wish James Glover could tell us something. I don't know. On the witness stand, when uh, you were testifying, and they played that tape, and Mr. Sam said that you said, I smothered my child, what did you say? I told him that I didn't say that, that that's not what I said. And what did you say? I think I said I'm so scared. Do you feel that there was corrupt, corruption in the Macon Police Department? I know that, um, that they threatened witnesses. They threatened Charles? Changed his opinion of you? I've not spoken to him, so I don't know. When did he change his opinion of you? Was it after you told him that you failed the lie detector test? I never told him that. You never told him that? No. Well, he said in court, he said on the stand that you told him. He perjured himself because I never spoke to him. You think he lied about that? Yes, I do. May I ask you again? Are you responsible? Are you? No. Did you ever see any pictures of your daughter when they found her on that road? No. You never saw her? The only thing they ever showed me was a picture of her arm. Show the picture we have with the, you know. It's gonna be tough for you, but this is, this is the picture of her on that road. You never seen those photos? The only time they ever had any out um, was during the trial. Did you have any idea if that's how she was found? Hmm? You want me to take it away? Hmm, take it. Maybe this will make you feel better, Therese. Teresa, people call you the monster from hell because of this, what happened to your daughter. They say you are the murderer. What do you say to those people? I loved my daughter. I was a single mom that made mistakes, but I loved my daughter. Last time I walked out of here, I had my doubts. But this was uh, a lot of emotions. I really she felt emotional. She did today with us today. It wasn't an act. That was a human emotion. But it, it, it seems to be that they railroaded this poor girl and convicted her. She was in a local, came from out of town, out of state. And they, they had tunnel vision. They pointed their whole investigation toward this young lady, and they didn't, they didn't look anywhere else. They didn't look at anything else. I mean, for a year, a year and a half, they tried to make a case against this girl, and the case they made was not even that good. It was a weak case. It, it was been circumstantial evidence. A lot of circumstantial, weak circumstantial evidence. From the time of Taylor's death, it took the police another year and a half to finally file charges against Teresa Fargus. But in our opinion, the investigation was nothing more than an orchestrated witch hunt, intent on gathering enough circumstantial evidence to prosecute and convict Teresa at any cost. But without some sort of new evidence, this is where Teresa Farguson will likely remain for the rest of her life. I don't think we'll ever know if James Glover was involved in Taylor's death. But we think Teresa got a raw deal and should have never been convicted, let alone arrested in the first place. The Wrong Man is back next Tuesday at 9 with the case of Edward Lee Elmore, the longest serving death row inmate. Next, Cold Case Files.